Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, May 9th. And this video is for those of you who were absent today. Uh, it's very important that you go through every part of this video. Don't skip anything um, because you do have an assignment at the end. And it's important that you, uh, I've got some key concepts in here. So it's important that you go ahead and do the lesson 1.6 today um, for homework. And then uh, everything will be due for you tomorrow or whenever you come back. All right, so the warm-up today is based on what we did on Friday. We've got this young person, Jamie, who's using the SIM, and he asks you for advice. He says, I want an ecosystem that makes as many ESMs as possible. What should I do to increase the number of ESMs? And you can choose more than one answer. So go ahead and do that and then uh, stop the video and we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so hopefully you talked about if we know that the two things that affect the number of ESMs are carbon dioxide and sunlight, if Jamie wants as many ESMs as possible, hopefully you said to increase the amount of carbon dioxide and increase the amount of sunlight. All right, so we're gonna examine the um, key concepts so we've got four key concepts for photosynthesis. First one is key concept number four, when there's more carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. Uh, in abiotic matter, more carbon is available to producers for making ESMs. You can shorten this as, as whatever you want. Basically, when there's more carbon, there's more available for producers in making ESMs. Because remember, we take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, from the abiotic matter, air. And if there's more carbon, you can have more ESMs. That just makes sense. Go ahead and pause the video and write this in. Uh, you can shorten it, whatever makes sense to you. Okay, key concept number five is the opposite. When there is less carbon, there is less available for producers in making ESMs. Key concept number six, when there is more sunlight, producers can make more ESMs from the carbon and carbon dioxide. Remember the sunlight is our energy source and we cannot have a chemical change without a source of energy. So it makes sense, the more energy we have, the more ESMs are available. And then just the opposite, when there is less sunlight, producers cannot make as many ESMs from the carbon and carbon dioxide. Okay, so then these concepts are gonna help you explain why the plants and animals in the biodome did not have enough energy storage molecules. That's our question or our chapter one question. And at the end of this lesson, you are gonna have to write an explanation to answer that question. So we've got a new message from Dr. Corey. He says, based on your investigation so far, it seems like there are two possible explanations for the plants and animals in the biodome not having enough ESMs. Claim number one is a change in the amount of carbon dioxide led to a decrease in the amount of energy storage molecules made by producers in the biodome. And claim number two says a claim in the amount of sunlight left led to a decrease in the amount of ESMs made by producers in the di uh, biodome. Before you share your findings with the Econauts, you'll need to decide which explanation is best. So you only can argue one claim. I'm sending on along some data that might help you decide. After you examine the data, send a message to the Econauts with a visual model and a written explanation. So this is the graph that Dr. Corey sent on to us. And I'm gonna review some of the features of a graph. So we've got the title, we've got the X and the Y, access title, and then um, here's our key. So let's just kind of dissect this a little bit. So the title of this graph is carbon dioxide, sunlight, and water. And we're looking at the amount over a period of time, and that's years. If I look at this line right here, it shows me, this is year three, the Econauts begin to notice that the plants and animals were not getting enough ESMs right here in year three. And so you're gonna look at the amount of carbon the amount of sunlight, here red, and the amount of water. And based on this graph, what do you think the answer to chapter two is? What claim can you support using this graphic? I'm not gonna tell you, I'm hoping that it's pretty obvious to you and you're gonna use that. All right, so 
in uh, lesson 1.6, activity number two, there's a picture of this graph, so you can use that. And then you're going to go to activity number three, and there's a reasoning tool down on that screen, uh, and it's an evidence. It's got a place for you to write evidence. Tell me why that av evidence matters, and then therefore, so your claim is there. What, what claim do you support? So the evidence, please don't just put the graph shows me. Tell me exactly what evidence you're using from the graph. Because remember, our two claims was either that there was a lack of sunlight or there was a change in the sunlight or there was a change in the carbon. And I need to know which one are you looking at and, and describe what you see on that graph. Then tell me, what, why does that matter? Why is what we see on that graph, why does that matter? And then you tell me, therefore, claim number one or claim number two. And please don't just say claim number because I want to know. I want you guys to use the words and answer the question. Answer that claim. Tell me what they are. Okay? Don't just say, therefore, I support claim number one or therefore, I support claim number two. Tell me what that claim says. All right? So this is going to be in activity number three. It's this tool right here. And that is just to kind of help you put your thoughts down on paper, okay? Then you're going to go into activity number four, which is a model for the Equinauts. Now, um, on Friday, if you were here on Friday, you created a model and everybody got signed off on that model. So I know if you were here on Friday, you have a correct model. If you were not here on Friday, you need to go back to one, five, activity two, and complete the model and make sure that you, I think it says save and continue, do that because it'll take a screenshot of that and pull it over to activity four, okay? So if you are in activity four, you were here Friday, you're ready to go. Your image should show up right here. And then in this space, you are gonna explain to the Equinauts why the plants and animals in the biodome were not getting enough ESM molecules. So go back to activity three, use your reasoning tool, and use your model to kind of help you write your, your claim. I guess it's a scientific argument. I'm not expecting a lot of evidence, or I'm sorry, I'm not expecting a lot of writing. You can, uh, probably a really good, beefy sentence will do just fine. All right, make sure that you hand this in. I am taking a grade for this. And I also want to make sure that you guys are reviewing your vocabulary and your key concepts, okay? All right, let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you, hopefully, tomorrow.